In the past videos, we've seen how to get a sequential number using the C sum, but we're going to use the count over to do the exact same thing. As you can see here, we're going to get product ID, sale date, daily sales. Now we're going to do a count asterisk over order by product ID, sale date, rows unbounded proceeding, and we're going to get a number from one all the way continuous to the end. Take a look at this answer set. I've color coded it in blue and red for you. Notice we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it resets. I did a count asterisk over. I want you to tell me without seeing the SQL what made this reset. As you can see, it's the partition by statement that makes this reset. Anytime you see any ANSI OLAP with a partition by statement, only that OLAP will reset. This query will take a look at the max of daily sales over, and when it orders by product ID, sale date, rows, unbounded proceeding, it does the sort first, and then it begins to list the max value, and as the next daily sales comes up, if it's not over that max, it just continues there. And when it resets, you go, oh, that's a higher max. So it will continue to bring you the max value thus far. Here's another version of our max over of daily sales, which again brings me the max value thus far after things are sorted by product ID and sale date. But what's interesting here is it resets and you're really starting to get good at this because you notice it has the partition by statement, which means partition by product ID. I will start this again when I reach the new product ID. This is the min over, the min of daily sales. It's not an aggregate because of the word over. It's an ordered analytic. So the first thing we're going to do is order by product ID and sale date. And then once all the rows are sorted, they will begin to do the calculation on the min. On day one of daily sales, after the sort, we made 48, 8, 50, 40. That's the min to start. Then we made 54 and we say, oh, that's above that. So we still keep our min of 48. We eventually get to the 36 and that's the new min. So this is going to give you the minimum value thus far. So you can always see that down the line. Take a look at this little masterpiece. There's a lot to it, so take your time. We're going to understand this very well. We're going to do the min of daily sales over. We're partitioning by product ID, so we will get a reset. But take a look after the order by product ID and sale date, rows one following and one following. So what will we get? After the sort, we'll see all the product ID 1000s and we're going to say, what do we do on day one? 48, 8, 50, 40. Hey, what will be the next row's daily sales? And we see that on the same line of the next row is going to have 54, 522. And then we go down, we go, oh my goodness, the next daily sales was 54,000. What's next after that? 36,000. What's next after that? 40,000. That's what it's going to do. On the same line, it's going to show you what you did for today's daily sales and tomorrow's daily sales as well. Take a look at this. I don't know how people came up with this, but we're going to take a look at the min again of sale date. And we again see that we're partitioning by product ID and we're going to order by product ID and sale date. And we've once again got rows between one following and one following. What's it going to do? After the sorting and the partitioning, we're going to see that we say, oh, on day one, we made 48, 8, 50, 40. What was the next date on the same line that we had a sale? And it'll tell you the next date. When you look down to the next row, you go, oh my goodness, that was the next date. And we made 54, 500 in this row. What was the next date we had a sale? So imagine if you're in 
a retail business and you've sold some large product and you go, I sold that for $10 million. When's the next time I'm going to sell one of those? Ooh, a week from now? And that's the idea behind this beautiful query. This lesson brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Need to learn SQL for Natiza, Teradata, or Aster? Visit coughingdw.com for our helpful training guides. With Teratom, SQL stands for So Quickly Learned. Hi, this is Tom Coughing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you are kept up to date on all our videos.